Good morning. Welcome to Coffee with the Pastor. Hope you're having a good morning. Uh, we are looking in the book of Acts. We're in chapter 16. We're in the second missionary journey of Paul. Paul has been called to come over to Macedonia, modern day Greece. He has come to Philippi. On the Sabbath, he looked for people praying or people who would be worshiping. And since they didn't have a synagogue, he looked by a river, and sure enough, he found some women who were. He shared the gospel with them. Lydia becomes a Christian, becomes a believer, a Christ follower. She invites them to stay in her home. She probably has a nice home. She's a dealer in purple, which would have meant that she was wealthy. She'd been in the upper class. And they're staying there. And then they're ministering there in, in Philippi. In verse 16, it says, Once when we were going to the place of prayer, and I notice it says we, it means that Luke has joined them. Uh, when he says we, it means he's there. So once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. Uh, they're going to the place of prayer. That would have been the place by the river. You remember the place where Paul found them? I showed you a picture yesterday of, of that river right there by Philippi. It's where that they would have baptized Lydia. And uh, they're going back there to pray, and, and uh, there's a servant girl who predicts the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune teller. The girl followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are the servants of the Most High God who are telling you, the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Now that would get obnoxious, having a, a girl following you just shouting the whole time. Um, the implication is that she's probably demon-possessed. Finally, Paul became so troubled and he turned around and said to the Spirit, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the Spirit left her. So she had a, an evil spirit that would tell the future and things, made their owner some money. Paul cast it out of her. And when the owners of the slave girl realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us. Romans to accept or practice. And the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. So they were beaten, they were put in jail, and they believe this is a, this is a picture from that I they, they believe this is a picture of the jail. It's not very big. Uh, there's the, the, the jail thing, and then this might probably might have been the cell where they, they had been chained, and you can see it's not very big. And then something amazing happens. Uh, with that. It says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And now the prisoners were listening to them. About midnight, they're singing and they're praying to God. I, if I'd have been just beaten, I don't know if I'd have been singing, but, but they were. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And when it's all, the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself, we're all here. The jailer called for lights and rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. 
and immediately he and all his family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. Uh, quite a story. Uh, and we see all types of society pull up by that are, that are saved. There's, there's Lydia, who's a wealthy woman. She would be in the upper class. There's a slave girl who had been in the lower class, and she was saved. And now we're going to have a middle-class jailer, a uh, Roman jailer. And uh, when the earthquake happened and the, the, the gates of the jail fell open, uh, he was going to kill himself because uh, Romans took uh, doing your job very seriously. And if the uh, prisoners would have escaped, he, he would have had a death penalty. So he was just going to go ahead and save them trouble, go ahead and kill himself. Paul says, don't do yourself any harm. We're all here. Don't worry about it. And he had been listening to them pray and sing, and he knew they had something. So he went and said, what must I do to be saved? What a great question. And he says, believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And he did. He said, you and your, your whole household will be saved. And so they were all saved. They got baptized. Yeah, it sounds like I got baptized at night. Uh, he wiped their wounds from them, took them to his house, gave them something to eat. Uh, quite a night for, for Paul and Silas. Uh, every now and then, I talked with somebody who believes in infant baptism. And, and the one thing I point out is that there's no place in the New Testament where an infant is baptized. And they point to this passage here. They say, well, yes it is because when they were talking to the Philippian jailer, uh, it says that he and his whole household were baptized. And they said the household would include servants who probably had babies. Blah, blah, blah. I did a little research into that. Actually, the jailers... Uh, Especially at like a, this was a Roman colony, probably set up for Roman soldiers to as a as as a reward. They probably were given property and some money to, to get a new start and, ha and jobs like jailers. They would have been older. They would have been older older guys for that time, and it was quite likely that their servants had been with them for quite a while. So I don't know that it's just automatically assume that there would have been babies in that household. I think probably not. And so, but he was he was excited. And, and I love that question. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they tell him, believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Same way we're saved. And, uh, but, uh, then something happens, and, and I won't read this part, but then, they don't realize that Paul and Silas are Roman citizens. So they were just Jewish. And they've beaten a Roman citizen. And that's a huge penalty. If Paul turns them in that they had done that, uh, they would have been punished themselves. And so they, they beg for their forgiveness, set them free from prison, and, uh, and just ask them if they would, if they would leave. Um, Paul and Silas go back to Lydia's house. They organize a church, encourage them, and then they do leave. Uh, what a time in Philippi. Uh, a, a great time in Philippi. And uh, I uh, I just love that story, that place. Uh, and now that I've been to the ruins there and saw that river where she was baptized and where they prayed, where they held church and saw the jail where he was kept, uh, it's amazing, and uh, if you want to go with us, come go with us uh, next October of 22. Uh, we're going to go back and see Philippi and all these places we're going to read about. Well, I hope you have a good day, and we'll continue our study of Acts tomorrow. Bye, and see you later.